Cuna. Today, we're going to be going from eggshells to crystals. Now, eggshells are primarily calcium carbonate, and that's a base. So we're going to be reacting them with vinegar or acetic acid to make a salt. And then we'll be crystallizing that salt. If you want to follow along, all the equipment is in the description box. Now, let's get started. So what I've got here is a nice transparent mug. I just happen to have a mug that's like a beaker, but you could use a glass, but a big one to hold a fair bit of material. And then in this, I've got the shells of six eggs. And those shells, well, they're calcium carbonate, or mostly calcium carbonate. There's some other bits and bobs in there, and we'll see that when I add the acid, it'll react with the calcium carbonate, but it'll leave a lot of bits of gunk behind that we'll have to filter off. And what I've got is some vinegar. Now, I've got the strongest vinegar I could get. So let me just put that there so you can see. And it's apparently 8%. Now, normal sh vinegar you can get from the shop is about 4%, but I just wanted to get the strongest so I didn't have to use quite as much liquid. But if you can only find the weak one, don't worry, you'll just need to use a little bit more. And all I'm going to do is add liquid up to the 100 milliliter mark on my beaker. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be measured out exactly, because I'll add a little bit more if there's still eggshells left. But what I will say is that we don't want to react all the eggshells, because I'd rather all the acetic acid or in, uh, acetic acid in the vinegar has been used up. So I'm going to add that now. Just going to add it. Oh, there we go. And you can maybe already begin to see some bubbles. That's because it's reacting with the vinegar. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit more in there. I'm going to take it up to about 200 milliliters. There we go. And so what we're doing here is our base, that's the calcium carbonate, is reacting with the acetic acid in vinegar. And it's neutralizing it. And we're getting a salt, and the salt is calcium acetate. We're also, so the bubbles, the bubbles are carbon dioxide to being given off, and we're also getting water out of this reaction. Now, I do have a spoon to mix this up with, but at the minute it's reacting really well, so I don't think I'm going to, going to bother doing anything with that just yet. going now for about 40 minutes and there's still eggshells there's still quite a bit of eggshell in the bottom but I'm really happy with how that reaction has been going and you can maybe see all these little feathery like pieces well they're just the little membrane in the shell that hasn't been dissolved so you can see how much shell must have been dissolved to release those and in fact if you look at the level of shell it's a lot lower than what we started with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave it for an hour to make sure the reaction's completely finished. And I'll see you back then. Well now, it's been an hour or so. I can still see lots of bubbles coming off. Now, there is a nice straightforward way for us to tell if the reaction has finished. 
we can use some of the indicator we prepared in a previous video. We can use some of that red cabbage indicator. If you'd like to see how to make it, I'll put the video link in the description box. So what I'm going to do is just using things that you probably have around the house, I'm going to take a little egg cup like this, and a spoon, a little spoon. I'm just going to mix that up a little bit, and I'm going to try and get some of the solution. It doesn't matter if it has some bits in it, it's going to be hard to avoid having bits. I'm just going to put a little bit of that solution in the egg cup. This is just to make it easier to see the test. So let's add a little bit of our indicator to our sample. There we can see that that's very purpley. It's still a little bit pink, but I think that's definitely good enough for us now. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this reaction and filter the reaction mixture through a funnel. So I've got a saucepan and a funnel and I'm just going to pour the reaction mixture into the funnel, it's a big funnel, so that we can remove the solids. And the reason I'm putting it into this pan is so that I can reduce the solution to about half its volume. And I'm just going to do that over the hob, but first we've got to filter it. Right, that's all the solution filtered. So now I'm going to boil off half the water on the hob. Now, I've reduced the solution down in my pan, but as I was doing it, there were lots of little white fibres come out. And so, as it cooled, and I've let it cool right down to room temperature so I can touch the pan really easily, it's not hot at all, there are little fibres present in there. Now, remember, eggs contain a lot of proteins, so I think some of these made of aggregated. And that's actually really good, because it means we can get rid of them, clean the solution up a bit. So I'm just going to filter it again into this glass... Um, Pyrex. There. So now I'm going to leave this solution someplace like a windowsill to slowly evaporate and see what crystals we get forming. So after five days can start to see that some crystals are growing around the edge of this bowl here. Now I want to collect some of these so that we can have a look at them. And I see it took five days for these to grow. Crystal growing is not quick. You don't want us to do it really fast. It's something we enjoy. So I'm just going to collect a few off the side. And so here we have it, our calcium acetate crystals. Now, these are actually very small crystals. It's very hard to see because it's all packed together. And it's also a bit messy. This is not going to be the cleanest product yet. It could be redissolved and allowed to crystallise again. But it's just fascinating to think that we've gone from something like this from an egg to this really beautiful white sort of crystalline substance of calcium acetate. Now my calcium acetate is still a bit wet and in fact calcium acetate is hydroscopic. That means if you leave it out in the atmosphere it will absorb water so it's very hard to get it completely dry. So I'd leave it on like a windowsill with sunlight on it so that it will dry up relatively quickly. And then I'm going to store mine in a little sample vial. Well that completes our making a soluble salt from calcium carbonate or eggshells using vinegar. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. 
We're going to be doing a little bit of an exploration of calcium chemistry over the coming weeks, so make sure you check out those videos. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching.